Welcome back. You are still watching tonight. And it's time now for data points. We're looking at uh, with the power generating capacity in the country. Let's begin by looking at uh, what the president said uh, yesterday, or is it the day before, that uh, there is load shedding that happens in the country between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m., where some areas are shut down from uh, the national grid. Then the national production, according to the president, is 2,300 megawatts. And there's a data center that was supposed to be set up, costing or rather requiring up to 1,000 and megawatts of power and therefore there is a problem uh, with uh, how that can run given the country's capacity but now when you look at the data this are uh, this is a report from the kenya power and lighting company of the financial year ending june 2024 says that the installed capacity in the country is 3243 megawatts but then there's a difference between installed capacity and the effective interconnected capacity meaning what is available uh, for distribution 3056 megawatts still higher than the president's number and uh, then there's something important. The wind and solar contribution uh, to this national capacity is 635 megawatts, which is considered to be intermittent in nature, meaning sometimes may not be reliable. It depends on the amount of wind that is available, the amount of solar, but also how well it is uh, stored. Therefore, if you are to knock off uh, that from the 3,056 megawatts, you remain with some 2,421 megawatts, which could be considered to be stable. But then what is our peak demand? According to the same report by the K KPLC, the peak demand was 2,342 megawatts. So peak demand means that uh, when majority of the clients are connected and are using power. That's KPLC in 2024. Let's take a look at uh, what else data is telling us. Now, the latest report from Kenjan tells us that the highest peak demand has been recorded, which was on the 24th of October 2025, just a few days ago, and it was 2,411 megawatts, still slightly higher than the stable supply in the country, which is 2,421 megawatts, according to the Kenya uh, pipeline, as rather KPLC, Kenya Power and Lighting Company. Let's take a look at what Kenjen said after that record that was uh, made on that 24th of October, that notably no load shedding was reported across the national uh, grid during the record-breaking demand period, a testament to Kenya's robust system management and investment in renewable capacities beheaded by Kenjen and supported by other sector players. That's according to Kenjen on the 20th of October 2025. But then the KPLC in its report cites that there are certain options it has had to look for bearing in mind the capacity in the country. One of the things is that they do load management is, uh, is required. That's what the KPLC says. A strategic investment is required. Adequate system support during peak demand hours is also necessary. And then there's something else, sufficient spinning reserve uh, capacity for contingencies. So in a situation where you have uh, some outage, you require some reserve which can be deployed uh, to sustain the national grid at a particular given time. Uh, so that's what KPLC says. Kenjen says no load shedding was required. KPLC says it may be required. The president says it actually happens. Now, let's take a look at uh, the contribution of each source of energy in the country for hydro which has uh, the second highest contribution. The installed capacity is 26% of the national uh, um, installed capacity. But then installed capacity versus effective capacity, meaning what eventually gets into the national grid is 26.5%, slightly different. For geothermal contribution is 29% installed capacity, but it, uh, what gets into the national grid is slightly lower. Then you look at thermal, 19%, effective is 17.4%. Wind contribution is 13%, eventually gets to 13.9%. Then for solar, 7%, the actual contribution uh, comes to 6.9%. And then the are imports that have been growing over the years, now at 6%, uh, install capacity, but then effectively they contribute up to 6.5%. Those are just some of the figures that are necessary in considering that. But then again, the president spoke about um, an EcoCloud G42 data center project that was um, assigned, an MOU was signed some time early last year. It was supposed, the initial plan was supposed to require 100 megawatts. It is situated at the Kenjan Smart uh, Industrial Park in Naivasha, but in future, they hope that it will take up to 1,000 megawatts, meaning it will be so big 
to require that amount of power. That's what the president was speaking about. But let's just briefly talk about what is the data center for your understanding. We're talking about large-scale tech facility. Of course, it, it has digital and IT infrastructure for an organization or for a country in this case. And then also there are servers and storage systems for them uh, to manage uh, the flow of that uh, data center itself. Uh, what is key here are processes to process the data, to store the data, and eventually to manage the data. And it becomes quite critical, especially at a time that the country and the world is moving towards artificial intelligence and ensuring cloud computing efficiency. And obviously, a data center would require high and stable